Already saw on Thursday night, the Mississippi Forestry Association named its selection for Outstanding Tree Farmer of the Year. This week's feature story is your introduction to the winner, Roy Thigpen of Montrose, Mississippi. His story is a great example of land and trees as a legacy and how that legacy can be successfully passed from generation to generation. Yeah, it's, um, it's basically a full-time job. It's something all the time. Even though he is 76, Roy Thigpen is far from being retired. He's too busy growing trees and growing a legacy. I've never seen anybody work as hard as I've seen him um, since, since we've been here. He has really put his heart and soul into it. Roy and his wife, Julia, have lived on this tree farm 14 years, but the connection to this land is lifelong for Roy. The property has been a certified tree farm since 1960. The legacy began with Roy's father, Chester Thigpen, seen in this Farm Week video from 20 years ago. Chester became interested in tree farming long before most people realized the potential wealth of the state's timber industry. Chester was named the state's outstanding tree farmer of the year for 1994-1995. And in 1996, he and his wife Rosette were honored as the national outstanding tree farmer of the year. Although Chester and Rosette have since passed away, a sign on the property serves as a constant reminder of their achievement and the legacy connected to this tree farm. Today, under Roy's stewardship, the property has been described by an official of the American Forest Foundation as one of the best managed and well-kept loblolly pine stands he's ever seen. On the day of our visit, Roy was overseeing a second thinning in this 30-year-old plantation on the property. This crew had already completed a first thinning of this much younger stand of timber nearby on the tree farm. Registered forester Craig Youngblood had just started as Roy's consultant when these trees were planted 15 years ago. We just went ahead and got the logger to kind of come through and um, cut us some, some corridors. And we really didn't thin anything to the side, we just cut the corridors out and allowing these trees to put on a little bit um, more diameter. Mr. Thigpen is, is one of my more active uh, landowners. He does a lot of maintenance on the property. He's constantly working out here. He's doing, uh, maintaining the roads, uh, bush hogging areas that you would never think you'd need to take your bush hog in just to open it up and so he can, you know, tell people, you know, this is, it looks, make it look a lot better. He, he asks a lot of questions. He goes to a lot of forestry meetings. He gets ideas and then he, he, he tries to do it himself, which is, which is great. Another example of some of the forest management work done on the tree farm in the last five years includes the harvest of this 45 acre tract of timber and its replanting in loblolly pine. And after we clear cut it, we came back in, uh, in, in, uh, uh, in 2012 and just let it lay out in 12. In 13, we did an aerial herbicide application to kill the uh, woody and grassy vegetation. And uh, that was done in August of, uh, of last year. And uh, in November of last year, 13, 2013, we uh, got the Forestry Commission to come in and burn it, burn it for us. So in January of this year, 2014, we replanted it. Well, we've, we've been, been involved with the Thick Pen Tree Farm for, you know, for 50 years, our agency. And uh, over the last uh, 25 years or so, we were involved uh, helping the Thick Pens plant trees uh, using various cost share programs. Uh, but over the last few years, we've been uh, helping them a lot, doing some prescribed burning, uh, trying to uh, help them improve their stands of trees uh, and uh, putting in fire lanes and that's how we've been helping uh, Mr. Roy and his family. In addition to calling on professionals to help him manage his farm better, Roy is also involving the next generations of fig pens in order to grow the legacy his father began. Roy and his wife Julia are actively involving the third and fourth generations of the family now in the management work on the tree farm. Grandson Roy Thigpen III, known as Trey, and son Roy Thigpen Jr. say they are grateful they have a chance to be involved. Uh, one thing that he got myself and my son out here to do was just to uh, learn how to do some control burning. Uh, one of the first things that he made sure was prepared first was uh, we got the lane set up. 
Uh, and then from there, you know, we just took a small area. Uh, I want to say maybe a little under uh, 15 acres, tw uh, 15, 20 acres. And we just did a complete walk around in order to get the fire going in. And then once we felt comfortable that, uh, uh, that the, everything was burning, then we walked through the lanes in order to ensure that we got um, the area covered well. It was, I guess, being a young guy, it was kind of fun, you know, getting to play with a little bit of fire. and. Uh, it was also fun, you know, getting to learn something new, you know, how uh, how I got to, uh, I guess, burn off the natural vegetation and, you know, what it's actually for, you know, to help the, uh, to help the trees grow. So it was a great experience for me. It's great to see, you know, my grandfather, you know, do the things that he loves. I like to say that he's my role model. He puts a, uh, sets a great example for me and I like to uh, follow his footsteps. And that, you know, again, it's a great, great example of what, you know, uh, a significant asset land and timber can be to, to a family and how they're, they're managing it. And then, you know, you, uh, you're watching it go from one generation to another. And each generation is being taught how to manage it, how to properly manage it, to get the appropriate help. And, and, and that's really important, that they're bringing that next generation along. In addition to his family, Roy Thigpen also promotes forestry to others. One recent event on the farm was a field day for youth for the National Wild Turkey Federation. And in December 2012, he hosted a field day here for the National Network of Forest Practitioners. Even a group of Jasper County fourth graders came out for a conservation field day in 2008. Proper tree farm practices, such as the establishment of food plots like this, continue to increase the wildlife on the place. There's even a pond for fishing. One day I decided I was going to, I said, I think I'll have some fish for dinner. <laughs> and went out to the pond and caught five fish and that was enough for dinner. <laughs> uh, it was fun. Roy Thigpen is an active member of the Jasper County Forestry Association, as well as the Mississippi Forestry Association. He enjoys sharing the lessons he's learned with others. His goal and vision for this tree farm remains the same as it was the day the property became his. We tried to make sure that we um, continue what my dad started, try to make sure that we, we keep it up and I look forward to leaving it in a better shape than what I found it. Those who know Roy Thigpen and know this tree farm will tell you the legacy is in good hands. From Montrose, Mississippi, I'm Leighton Spann reporting. And you can watch this story again on Roy Thigpen at the Farm Week website or on the Facebook page or the YouTube channel. Our website address is farmweek.msucares.com. And you can try out our Facebook page and give us a like if you wish. Facebook fans, a reminder, you see our stories first every Friday. And artist, 320 acres, that is quite a place he has there. That is a magnificent tree farm. As you could just, our, our pictures didn't do justice no, uh, no. to it. Uh, they're just, it is a beautiful place. And like I say, remember his dad had it certified as a tree farm back in 1960. And that was a time when most people still saw trees as being in the way. They were basically big weeds. Right. And we're usually trying to think of a way to knock them down to clear land for either crops or, or cattle. So he really was a visionary in terms of looking ahead. 